Okay, hello again. Um, we are at Mersey Island and we're doing a long walk to us. Say we, because Alex is here and he's very kindly lent me this, his, his fancy phone, because my camera has absolutely died. Um, yesterday's walk faxed it, it just wouldn't work, so <clears throat> it's really good because that was a really good walk. A lot of history there and I had nothing to record it with, so. Uh, that was a shame, but I might go back there and try and refilm some of the stuff. So yeah, this is uh, Mersey Island, just off the Essex coast. Uh, it's about an hour, ten minutes drive from mine. And this walk is basically, uh, with, well, we're circumnavigating the island. Walk around the whole edge of the island, so it's about 12 miles. Take us about four or five hours. Um, it's really warm today, the sun's out, we picked a good day for it, a little bit of a breeze you know, off the, the coast. And uh, yeah, with this we probably should get some better footage than I normally get, it already doesn't look as shaky. <laughs> as, uh, that's my thing, hang on he's... Come on, it's not dandelion but hey, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that needs a lot. <laughs> there we go, alright. And uh, so if, uh, let's have a look at the book a minute. So, yeah, I've started doing this. Basically, that's the book I'm getting a lot of the walks out of at the moment. And I think it is, let me find it. It's, that sort of focus. Walk number two in the book. If anyone has the book, wants to do the walk, that's the one. Cheers. Um, okay, so up ahead of us is, Brightling Sea, and uh, hang on, just keep moving. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so the Brightling Sea that was basically like where I spent most of my summers as a kid. I guess we used to go there, and um, used to go crabbing over there, sort of in the distance there. You probably can't see there's a little white tower, Bateman's Tower, that's the main beach there little tidal inlet there that they've sort of sealed off and you know sort of a shallow area where like you know kids could sort of play and paddle and stuff little did I know at the time though that of course they used to piss and shit in there and uh it was awful I, I, I was fully submerged in that water several times um look I, how he turned out I know look how I turned out exactly there must have been something in the water literally um so uh there's some some cows over there um, and then the harbour is sort of round there to the right and you used to go there, they used to do cracking fish and chips there near the hotel and you could crab off of the like the jetty there as well. I remember someone next to me caught a jellyfish there once. Um, good times. Um, and then looking back, um, it's sort of way in the distance over there, we could see Bradwell Nuclear Power Station just being decommissioned and uh, that was where near St Peter's Chapel we uh, we finished the St Peter's Way walk so that's not far away um, and yeah I, that's about it really to say so far so we started from Cudmore Grove Country Park four pound parking but that's all day um, we've got ice creams we've bought sandwiches from there they love us um, <laughs> typical tourists um, you can get a ferry over there between April and October to Brighton Sea we're not going to do that because we haven't really got time we've got to do a whole day's walking so anyway um, more to come later on Okay, um, here we are. We're uh, we've been walking for probably over an hour now, nearly two hours. Yeah, we say yeah. we haven't got very far because we stopped for about 30 40 minutes to have something to eat. Um, it's got really warm, it's boat over in the distance, 
there's some signs you might not be able to see them little white signs on the other side of the uh, the estuary and they are warning signs not to land a boat there because that is part of the army garrison at Colchester the training ground uh, so we're on sort of like the the coast sort of headland path and it's pretty much looked like this for quite a way um, nice views though and so I'll just read a little bit from the book while we're walking along of all the islands of Britain Mersey would be the best for a food lover to be marooned on this most easterly English island has its own vineyard and brewery its salt marshes deliver tangy samphire and fattened lamb for the best London butchers and from its pure sea waters come scallop crab and lobster and oysters that grace the tables of some of the finest restaurants of Europe. Um, it also says we've got to time our visit carefully or we may have a late return if the tidal calls where if the strood is underwater. Uh, I think I've got a little bit somewhere on the strood. The strood is basically like like the road, the only access sort of road to get on and off the island and uh, it's basically been there since the Bronze Age. They sort of built like a rough wooden structure and of course it's subsequently been built on over the over the centuries. Um, it's quite a fancy road now with I think a 40 mile an hour speed limit. And, uh, but yeah, it does flood, but I think it only floods for like an hour at a time. So that's not a problem. I mean, we could always just go back to the pub. Um, <laughs> If, uh, what a disaster that would be. What a disaster, exactly. With all that food as well, you know, we've got mini fishing kits, we could catch some of those scallops and lobsters mm. and other stuff. Um, yeah, so that's about all I have to say on that really at the moment. Um, we haven't really come across any of this. We've seen some sheep, some bees, some cows. Uh, there's a tractors in the distance there. So there's a lot of farming sort of inland. Um, I'd say we've probably we've probably done like a quarter of the walk so far. We haven't done very far. Uh, when we get to West Mersey on the other side of the island, there's the one and only pub there. So we'll be stopping there. Then we'll stop for another break to have something else to eat. Um, that's about it really. Yes, yeah, so there'll probably be a bit more to see at West Mersey, but... We'll see, I'll try and keep you updated further along. Way. Half man down. I sort of slid down that. Which is good because I got it on film. Did you? Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, my shoelace has come undone. You're actually right. <laughs> I, that's, I wasn't saying it out. Oh, right, really? It's fine. They come undone really easy, these shoes. Yeah. The floor with them is the laces are crap. They're tough, but they come undone. And you're done! Yay! Yeah, I think so. Let's let's do it on my ass, frankly. Wee! That was fun. Really cool. I so want to be doing that. It's Alex speaking on behalf of Tom whilst we film this parasite. I don't know exactly the support it's called when you've got motor. We're about halfway round the island now and ahead of us this road is called the Strood. So it's liable to flooding 
um, at high tide and stuff. It's the only way on and off the island. So yeah, it, keep, it keeps sort of uh, so it keeps the mainland at bay for like up to an hour at a time. So we're gonna chuck a left here and uh, and then carry on. Um, I think I can just see the junction there up ahead where that car was sort of going. The weather's still good. Yeah, the weather's still good. Um, oh, there's some uh, whoa, there's mud there. Um, there's some uh, oh, it's speedboats or is it jet skis going going on over there in the distance? Um, and there's what you call them, the paragliders, the no, no, it's paraglides. No, they're the the motorised paraglide things, whatever you call them. I'm just thinking of the world is not enough. Yeah, there's another one up there, and then over there in the middle of the screen. Okay, so we're turning left up here at the Strood. Um, oh, there's Holiday Park there. Yeah, a few campsites on the island. Oh, there's the, the tide gauge for the height of the water. Okay, let's quickly cross. West Mersey we're heading to, two miles away, apparently. Colchester's seven miles away. Oh, nearly man down. Okay, and we want to cross over here. Here we've got some nice views here. There's the Strood looking out there. So I'm just going to quickly read you a bit from the guidebook about the history of the Strood. Hopefully you can hear me over the traffic and the wind. Okay, so looking this way. Ahead of you is the tidal causeway of the Strood. It often floods at high tide twice a day, keeping the mainland at bay for up to an hour at a time. Built at the end of the 7th century, this was a significant work of engineering for Anglo-Saxon England. Between 3,000 and 5,000 oak piles, each around 2 metres long, were driven deep into the clay and compacted sand and grit laid down on top to form a passageway. It is thought that construction was ordered by the St King Sabi or Sabi to ease access to the Minster at West Mersey. And of course successive services have been laid on top since as the sea level has risen. Very cool. And there's uh, oh, a it's the jet ski and they're like yeah. on the back there. So all sorts of water sports going on today. Yeah. Yeah, he said water sports. Oh <laughs> Alex I like very much the water sports. I always like my water sports. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, splashy. <laughs> Splash. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, I think that's enough for today. <laughs> More to come later on. Stay tuned. It's got kids, you see. Okay, so we've uh, been walking for a bit more 
It's uh, gone three, must be yeah, 336. 336. And uh, we're just sort of coming round the thing to, uh, we're past the Strood now, the, uh, what's it, the, the crossing and everything, way past that. And we're coming into West Mersey. There's two pubs here, so we shall sample them. There's the cafe, we won't sample that. Or well, there's, I think, what's it called, the company shed? Something like that, I can't even remember, that sounds like... Sure. Yeah, I've made that sound. It was actually the company shed, yeah. It sounded a bit ubiquitous, that. And, uh, yeah, they do, like, fish and shellfish and stuff like that. that that's... It's not, it's not really my cup of tea. Alex was like, I might like that. You're being shellfish. <laughs> oh! Uh, oh, see, my videos have got everything, even shit chokes. <laughs> um, but but no naked Sasquatch. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. I've been trying, but the zoom <laughs> lens isn't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is West Mersey um, by the harbour. Really nice here. Very nice, lots of boats. And uh, yeah, we just passed the caravan park. We didn't want to film that because that, no, that doesn't look as nice. Um, and uh, oh, a big house there. How about that for your garden? Wake up, go there. Oh, they've got a, a really nice like little patio area there under the thing. That looks decent. That's that's got to be worth a bit. Um, there's people coming now, so we'll uh, we'll probably see you next in the pub. Okay, so we're uh, we're at St Peter's Well, um, which at one point until the last century or so was the island's only source of of water on the island. Um, pick that up in a minute. Yeah, until last century, the sole and infallible source of drinking water on the island. So I'll just read what it says. We know not what the well, well is worth until the well runs dry. This is the site of St Peter's Well, reconstructed true to the original as a tribute to a lost way of village life. For over a thousand years, this well was one of the main sources of fresh water for, Mersey, for West Mersey and had never known to run dry. Sponsored by West Mersey Town Council. Uh, it, will give, it will give them to him, that is... At thirst of the water of life freely, St. John. So yeah, we've found that. Um, we've, we've stopped at a couple of pubs um, in West Mersey. So it's, it's got a bit later now. It's about, what, five past five? Uh, yeah, it's 20 past five. 20 past five. So yeah, we've got to get a move on. Um, and we're heading up this way now. We've just come down from the coast road up there. So heading down here now to Monkey Beach and then I think we're <laughs> and then we're following the uh, basically the beach and the coast like the, the sea wall all the way back those two grey blocks in the distance that is Bradwell on Sea Nuclear Power Station which is being decommissioned I've done a walk over that way it goes all the way round there it's about like a seven mile walk it takes in uh, St Peter's Chapel which is the end of the St Peter's Way. That's a really nice place, that. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be sort of following along the wall back to uh, Cudmore Grove Country Park, where the car's parked. And this is basically the other side of the island, but we've probably done about two thirds of the walk now, so we haven't really got too far to go. Car park closes at nine, we'll be out before then. Um, yeah, really nice pubs, oyster sheds, cafes, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's been a nice day. It looks like it's going to turn out to be a nice evening as well. So uh, yeah, more to come. Okay, we're on Monkey Beach now. So we've even got a bit of uh, seaside beach walking now. There's a the nuclear power station over there. Right in the distance... 
somewhere over there by that sort of clump of trees there that is where St Peter's on the Wall Chapel is the end of the St Peter's Way been there a couple of times very nice and uh, yeah decent Uh, welcome to the bunker. No box. Brilliant. Yeah, just the back side. So this probably would be where they'd have like your big anti-aircraft gun. So you can get right into this. It's cool, yeah. and then like. Okay, so we are back at Goodmore Grove Country Park. We finished. The sun is sort of just starting to set. There's Alex. Good walk. Yeah, definitely. Very good, yeah. That's a good one. Nice 12 miles that. There's Brighton Sea over there in the distance. Bateman's Tower is about there. My finger is there. And um, we've gone past a lot of caravan parks and campsites and that on the way back along that side towards here, east coast. Um, it's sort of a lot more, I'd say it's a lot more seaside and touristy on that side of the coast, side of the island rather. Um, yeah, a lot more campsites and caravan sites, things like that. Whereas the other side, sort of, I'd say that would be the north side then, is a lot more barren yep. and stuff. So it's both nice really, both sort of two contrasts. Um, and yeah, the car is back that way. So uh, yeah, that's been a good walk that one. A nice coastal walk as well. The weather's been really good. We've got, well, I've got horribly burnt. Um, yeah, it's been good fun. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, you'll, see, you'll see us or you'll see me in the next one. I'll leave you with the view. Smile. <laughs> that was a video. <laughs>